Hello, everyone, and welcome to our school choice information session presented by Gaston County Schools. I'm Todd Hagens, and it is a pleasure to have all of you with us today. This program is the third of four school choice information sessions that are designed to give parents and the community an opportunity to learn about the 21 dynamic school choice and magnet school programs that are available to students for the upcoming 2021-2022 academic year. During this session, we are highlighting five of our school choice programs. The programs include the Public Service Academy at John Chavis Middle School, and representing Chavis Middle is the principal, Matt Reichert. The Public Service Academy at Cherville High School, and representing Cherville High is the principal, Kevin Doran. We also have the Leadership Academy at Costner Elementary School, and representing Costner is teacher Sherry Willis. The Leadership Academy at WC Friday Middle School, and representing WC Friday is teacher Katherine Davis. And the Leadership Academy at North Gaston High School, and representing North Gaston is the principal, George Connor. Also joining us is Terry Surbeck, our Director of Student Assignment. Thank you all for being with us today. As you all know, it is school choice time in Gaston County Schools, and we are currently accepting applications for all 21 of our school choice programs. Parents may submit an application by going to the Gaston County Schools website and clicking the School Choice Magnet Schools icon. You can also access the information through the Gaston County Schools mobile app. We want to let everyone know that the deadline to submit an application is Sunday, February 28th. Our school choice programs are open to students who are enrolled in Gaston County Schools, as well as students who are currently enrolled in a private school, charter school, virtual school, or homeschool program. Here is how today's webinar will work. We will give each school representative an opportunity to share information about the choice program at his or her school. Once we have shared about the five schools being featured during this session, we will give our webinar participants an opportunity to ask questions using the Q&A feature. We begin with an overview of the Public Service Academy. Then we will share information about our Leadership Academy. We all know that our students today will need to answer the call to be tomorrow's heroes, and middle school is an ideal time for students to begin thinking about how they can be a future hero. Through the Public Service Academy at John Chavis Middle School, students explore how they can one day make a difference in the following areas, education and teaching, criminal justice, public safety, emergency medical care, and government. Academic and career exploration is, is important during the middle school years as it is a time of self-discovery for adolescents. Students at John Chavis Middle have opportunities to learn about what it takes to become a police officer, firefighter, emergency medical technician, lawyer and judge, teacher, and a leader in municipal and county government. The program at John Chavis creates a pathway for students to participate in the Public Service Academy at Cherville High School. Through the Academy at Cherville High School, students can take advantage of exciting opportunities to earn certifications in public safety, including police, fire, and EMT, complete college coursework, and experience hand, hands-on learning by being involved in community service opportunities internships and partnerships with governmental agencies. Students who have an interest in education and teaching can explore what it is like to be a teacher and gain an understanding of what it takes to be a leader in the classroom through the teacher cadet program. And we are ready to hear from our schools about the Public Service Academy. And we begin with the Public Service Academy at John Chavis Middle School and Principal Matt Reichard. Mr. Reichard, in 100 words or less, how would you describe the program you have at John Chavis Middle School? Uh, thank you, Mr. Higgins. Um, at John Chavis Middle School, we feel like our Public Service Academy 
is dedicated to providing high quality education while also exposing students to the public service careers. These fields, if you've, as you've mentioned, can include education, criminal justice, public safety, military, emergency medical, and even government positions. We prepare our students by offering experiences to help them narrow their focus for when they attend high school at Cherwell High School. Students can then continue on at Cherwell High School and have the opportunity to attain certifications uh, in the public service fields and enabling, enabling them to become the heroes of tomorrow. So let's talk a little bit a little bit about the programs or the classes, the pathways even that you have uh, through the public service academy. Well, the, the pathways here, this is a, a whole school concept along with the ones that come in through the academy. As students progress to the middle school, their levels of experience increase. In sixth grade through their homerooms, they do research and are exposed to the different careers, what it takes in order to become a lawyer or a doctor. In seventh grade, we invite people in, the lawyers, the doctors, the medical personnel, to have the seventh graders attend assemblies and actually see what's going on, to see examples of forensic science, to see examples of different um, jobs. In eighth grade, however, they get to actually go out and do. They get to take the field trips to the fire stations, to the police stations, and actually have hands-on experience. And one other class that we're excited for a select few that want to do it is we're offering, um, hoping to offer the junior teacher cadets next year that will filter in and bolster the teacher cadet at Cherville High School. And I think you make a good point in that you mentioned a whole school approach. Yes, sir. And that means that students who live in the Cherville attendance area that attend John Chavis, as well as the students who come into John Chavis through the academy program by applying for this program, mm -hmm. all of the students at your school, they are involved in some aspect in this academy program. Yes, sir, and, and different opportunities are offered as they become more interested. Um, and, and again, we're working in conjunction to continue to build the program to make it even better every year um, with the help of Mr. Dorn at the high school. What would you say is something about the Public Service Academy that really makes it stand out? Um, our, our, our biggest one, I, I feel like the, the Academy allows for different experiences that help shape the children's future that they can, as they narrow their focus into the high school and know what they want to do. When they walk off the stage, they have a marketable skill that makes them valuable to the community and profitable to themselves. So if I challenged you to come up with three words that best describe your program, what would those three words be? Uh, preparing tomorrow's heroes. Um, and, and never more evident in the days that we are living in today that public service um, is needed. By exposing these students to these careers, we're getting them ready to earn the certifications. And again, as they walk across the stage, um, we'll allow them to be employable. So it, if there is one thing about the academy that students and parents and the community, they need to know about your academy program, what is it? The main thing is that the Public Service Academy helps us join with our community and our shared stakeholders and expose students to career choices that they can then go into high school and progress as far as certifications are concerned. And I certainly think that at the middle school level with the academy, you are establishing a foundation in public service so that when those students uh, reach the ninth grade at Cherville High School, they are putting that foundation into action. And uh, as we talk about Cherville High School, Principal Kevin Doran is with us. And Mr. Doran, um, I will ask you as well uh, to use 100 words to describe the Public Service Academy at Cherville High School. Thank you so much. The Cherville High School Public Service Academy provides high quality education for students interested in the fields of education, criminal justice, public safety, emergency medical technician, and government administration. We offer on-campus courses, college courses, certifications, and real-life experiences in high-demand, high-interest fields. Our academy answers the call for the heroes of tomorrow. And so let's talk a little bit about the 
um, classes, the pathways, the courses that are involved in the Public Service Academy at Cherville High School? No problem. On campus, government and law enforcement students take public safety one and two and earn numerous certifications, including National Incident Management, Citizens Emergency Response Team, and 911 Telecommunicator Certification. Our EMT students take EMT 1 and 2, and this allows them to sit for the EMT exam after graduation, which allows them to go directly into the job force. Finally, our education students take Teaching as a Profession 1 and 2, which includes a practical in one of our schools. And the value of all of these programs is it gives students hands-on experience while they're still in high school. Now, um, if you could take three words to describe the program at Cherville High School, what three words would you use? Well, the middle school chose uh, preparing tomorrow's heroes and we're creating tomorrow's heroes. And we don't take that tagline lightly. All of the fields that are covered by our academy are essential to our society. Being located in a small town allows us to have close relationships with city government, police, EMT, and local schools to ensure that our students are prepared to meet the needs of our community. And I think you make a good point that people need to realize um, the advantage of Cherville being a small community mm -hmm. is that you have a direct connection with the city of Cherville, the mm -hmm. Cherville Police Department, the Cherville Fire Department in providing those hands-on experiences. Uh, being able to see what a police department or a fire department or a city hall, what those places look like, and to really make what students are learning at school and in the classroom, it really makes it come to life to say, hey, this really can be a great career, a great opportunity for me. Yes, sir. Now, if if you had to say to the community, there is one thing that I want you to know about this program at Cherva High School, what, what would that thing be? Well, I'd like to talk about the program and really the community in general with this question. Um, we're very proud of the public service program at CHS, but what sells our school is our students and our teachers. We're a smaller learning community with just over 500 students here at Cherryville. At this size, we're able to build personal close relationships with our students, as well as have high expectations for academics, as well as behavior. And finally, we're blessed to come from an extremely supportive community. The Cherville High School Education Foundation has raised them as $500,000, which is spent directly in our, on our students in the form of instructional grants. This allows our students to have experiences that are unique to our high school. You know, our motto is forging Ironman with purpose, passion, and preparation for success. And we look forward to working with all of the county students in our public safety or public service program. And I, I think it's important to emphasize that this program, uh, middle school students can begin the program at John Chavis Middle School, build that foundation that it takes so that you can put what they have learned there into action at the high school level. And I think it's important to point out that um, you, don't, you don't have to be in the program at John Chavis to transition to Cherville High School. If you're in the eighth grade right now and you uh, like what you're hearing about Cherville High School, you can go directly into that program as a ninth grader without having attended Ch uh, John Chavis Middle School. I want to make that clear so that people don't think that uh, they've already missed out if they're, if they're not starting middle school for next year. I think it is important to um, let everyone watching know that for our school choice programs, students come into the school choice programs at the kindergarten, sixth grade, and ninth grade levels. But we do have, for some of our programs, we do have seats available on a limited basis at other grade levels. But typically for our programs, students begin at kindergarten, sixth grade, and ninth grade. So uh, thank you for that information about the um, Public Service Academy at uh, Cherville High School and John Chavis Middle School. We want to focus our attention now on the Leadership Academy. And the Leadership Academy involves our three of our schools in the Dallas area. So what is the Leadership Academy? Well, it gives our students an opportunity that they have the potential in them to be an outstanding leader at school and in their community. At Costner Elementary, every child can be a leader is the motto that drives instruction, which integrates academic, 
leadership, and life skills and creates a sense of student empowerment. Through the Leader in Me model, students at Costner learn about the importance of responsibility, integrity, vision, and teamwork, which are qualities found in an effective leader. Additionally, students learn how to handle challenges that elementary age children face. Special elective courses are available to students, including leadership and Spanish. The Every Child Can Be a Leader theme continues in the Leadership Academy at WC Friday Middle School. In the middle school environment, the academy program helps students to build their confidence and discover their true potential. During the middle school years, as students go through a self-discovery phase of life, it is important for them to realize that they have the potential to be an outstanding leader. The school follows the Leader in Me model, which focuses on the qualities of being an effective leader. Additionally, middle school students learn how to handle challenges that adolescents face. Students in the Leadership Academy at WC Friday can take high school courses, which gives them an opportunity to prepare themselves for what's ahead in high school as they go on to the Leadership Academy at North Gaston High School. In high school, we know that students discover their independence, ambitions, goals, opinions, and beliefs. The Leadership Academy at North Gaston High School provides academic and extracurricular opportunities to support students as they find their voice and discover a lot about themselves and the world around them. Again, the theme of every child can be a leader serves as the guiding principle and students engage in coursework and collaborative activities that help them realize they possess the potential to be an outstanding leader at school, in their community, and in life beyond graduation. The Leader in Me model is also used at the high school level and in addition to focusing on the qualities of an effective leader, students learn how to handle challenges that teenagers face and they gain a sense of purpose, belonging, and direction in life. And we are ready to focus on our Leadership Academy programs. And so we will begin with the Leadership Academy at Costner Elementary and joining us is teacher Sherry Willis. Ms. Willis, let's begin our conversation with, with giving you 100 words or less. How would you describe the program at Costner Elementary? Thank you, Todd. Um, I liked that you said every child can be a leader and the word leader often is a vague term. So we broke it down in our mission at Costner Elementary. And our mission as a staff and a community is that we pledge to develop the whole person and provide leadership opportunities for all children, all students. Um, we have them set and celebrate their own goals, both academic and non-academic, and really learn how to live the seven habits. So let's talk a little bit about the classes, the courses uh, that students take, and uh, if you will, um, expand a little bit on the concept of the seven habits of leadership. Sure. Um, the seven habits of leadership come from the original Stephen Covey, um, Seven Habits of Highly Successful People. Um, a principal in North Carolina was able to adapt it to students, um, and now it is obvious that that should have been happening all along. Um, we have leadership time every day. We've set aside about 25 minutes every morning and our students explore what it means to be proactive, what it means to begin with the end in mind. We have them practice think win-win scenarios. And these are things that can be applied in every subject, in every age, in every community, and in every career choice. Um, as they grow and learn. And the surprising, not surprising, but the wonderful thing that we got to see was the blossoming um, ideas and creativity of our students as they were opened up to this new world of, I can be in charge of this, I can lead this, my ideas matter. You make an excellent point with that because I really do think the Leadership Academy uh, gives a sense of empowerment 
to students and they realize that they can step up to the challenge. And I say that because I recall seeing an assembly program on video from Costner uh, from last year or the year before. And you had students involved with that program. And it was amazing that the students were leading the entire program with, with really without the adults. And, and it was great to see uh, elementary age children stepping into that role, going up on the stage, taking the microphone, talking to an audience, developing those leadership skills that for for some adults, uh, they, they can't even go onto a stage and talk in front of an audience. So it was great to see the uh, elementary students uh, taking on that challenging and doing it very well. So uh, that's one of the things that makes your program stand out. Is there something else in your mind that is really uh, uh, stands out about the Leadership Academy at Costner? Um, I think that because our staff immediately realized that this was what we were supposed to be doing all along, that their love and enthusiasm for being able to grow these students in all, all these different ways, just, it, it, it was surprising. I mean, you, you think teachers are, we're control freaks sometimes, but um, <laughs> you're right. Those students did do the tech work, the script, the songs, everything for that celebration. And each student decided on their own what was a valuable goal for them that they set and that they could celebrate. And students who are very, very shy all got up there and held the microphone and said what they were proud of themselves for. Instilling that sense of, I can do this, I did this, um, and my, my peers support me in this was invaluable. It was a very rewarding experience. And it really came naturally to our students. They've been wanting to do this all along. <laughs> so um, they, they really enjoyed all the aspects of it. And of course, we have Spanish that they love. They have Spanish all year. Um, our guidance counselor, who is wonderful, has added um, her own course. She's got ways for social emotional learning to be involved in it. It is leadership in every aspect of your life. Okay, one more question for you. If you could select three words to describe your program, what are those three words? Those three words would be, everyone has genius. We found that out very quickly. That was a paradigm that changed for us. It became we knew it all along, but it became clear to everyone that a honor roll may not be the only thing that is to be celebrated in this world. And that the genius that students have, and they have to have for their careers and for college and career readiness and all of those things, they are here all along. And just being able to reveal that to the students and for them to reveal it to us was incredible. So I know that as a teacher, it makes you feel good that you've prepared your students. And when they go on to middle school, you know that they are ready for the middle school environment. And representing WC Friday Middle School, we have teacher Katherine Davis with us. And Ms. Davis, the Leadership Academy at WC Friday, I know that you are, you are glad to get students from Costner who already have those traits of leadership instilled in them. So at WC Friday, there are a lot of similarities with the programs uh, from, from the elementary level. If you could describe uh, your program at the middle school level in 100 words or less, what would you say? Thank you, Todd. So just building on what Sherry said, um, the leadership program at WC Friday really is a unique opportunity because the whole program leader in me really focuses on the entire student um, and how to help them be the best leader and best person and member of society that they can be. Um, middle school is a very difficult time for some kids. They're trying to figure out who they are and who they want to be. Um, and this program really lets them hone in on what that is and what's important to them and how to be successful doing it, no matter what career, education, or home life they have. 
Um, and I think just the lessons and skills that they learn are things that they can take with them throughout the, their entire life. Talk a little bit about the classes or the courses that are available to students at WC Friday. And I know I mentioned earlier that middle school students have the opportunity to take some high school classes. Yes. Um, so we have several different high school classes that are offered to our seventh and eighth graders um, throughout their time that can help them um, succeed as they move on through North Gaston. Um, and we also have a lead class that our entire school participates in, similar to Costner, um, but they all have an opportunity to lead and learn about leadership. Um, through those lead groups, we do clubs and activities that allow them to participate in things that they're interested in and show their classmates and their peers and teachers how to do things and lead that way. And we also do service learning projects. So they're also taking in that community piece and learning, you know, how to give back and be successful um, in their community as well. And one of the things that I think that you are doing a great job at WC Friday is you are helping students understand their purpose and their connection to the community through very community service programs and activities so that they see that they belong not just to the school, but they belong to the community. Yes. So let's talk about um, what, what stands out about your program. Um, so for me, I mean, so many different things stand out, but the biggest thing is that it truly celebrates the individuality that each student has um, and the, the ways that they can be successful. Like Sherry said, you know, every child has genius um, and we just build on that. So take that genius that you have and really take it to the next level. Um, you know, a lot of times we think of the students that are natural leaders as the ones that are gonna be um, successful in the kind of in the spotlight, but that's just not true at WC Friday. We work hard to make sure, you know, everyone has an opportunity to lead um, and kind of hone that skill. And I think you would want parents to know that what you are teaching at WC Friday, it's instilling qualities in students that will serve them well beyond middle school and, and in life. So you, you are learning those lessons and those qualities mm -hmm. and how to be someone who contributes to society and to your community as a leader. Absolutely. So if you could pick three words that best describe your program at WC Friday, what are those three words? Um, those three words are together we lead. That's actually our school um, mission statement and our motto that we follow. We really work hard. Our students work fantastic together to create solutions and opportunities and um, working to be leaders in their school and their community and at their home. Well, a lot of excitement at WC Friday Middle School. And I do want to point out that even though there is a pathway from Costner to WC Friday to North Gaston, you do not have to start at um, the elementary school level to get into the program. So if you are in the fifth grade and you think, hey, this sounds wonderful, you can apply directly to WC Friday without having gone through the program at Costner. And the same thing at North Gaston, you can apply at the ninth grade without having been in the program at WC Friday. So um, Mr. Connor, the principal, uh, George Connor, the principal at uh, North Gaston High School, let's talk about uh, the Leadership Academy at the high school level and what would you say uh, to describe your program at North Gaston? Todd, I would say to start off with that um, 100 words is going to be tough to, to talk, take care of uh, talking about everything that's uh, involved in it, but I'll give my best shot. Uh, the Leadership Academy at North Gaston allows our students to enjoy the comprehensive programs we have already in place here at North, along with a deep dive into leadership. Uh, in partnering with the Stephen Covey Foundation, North Gaston utilizes the Leader in Me curriculum, which offers four separate leadership courses, uh, the foundation of which is the seven habits of highly effective teens. The curriculum introduces our students to goal setting and the soft skills that uh, are needed to be successful in today's world. Uh, the program impact is not just felt here at school, as uh, Sherry and Catherine have, have mentioned, but also in the student's home and in our community at large. Uh, as you continue through the program, Academy students are exposed to service projects and community outreach 
And the end result for our kids are the real world experiences that impact their community in a positive way. Uh, once students have completed all the courses, uh, they have the opportunity to achieve a credential uh, from the Stephen Covey Foundation. And Mr. Connor, I think that having that leadership credential serves a student well when that student applies to college, goes to college, applies for a job, um, and joins the military in whatever a student decides to do. I think that that is what employers and, and others are looking for, that leadership quality. Absolutely. Um, the the credential, uh, credentialing that the, the Covey Foundation does is highly sought after by Fortune 500 companies and the, and the military and uh, the business world for their employees. So uh, our kids would come out with, uh, with this credential would be uh, uh, at, a, at a definite advantage uh, going into uh, career and job search and, and college application process. So let's talk about the classes or the courses that are available through the Leadership Academy. Uh, share with us ab about those classes. Sure. Um, we use the Leader in Me curriculum, uh, which is based on the works of uh, Stephen Covey. Uh, we basically have four courses. Uh, the first course is the uh, Seven Habits of Highly Effective Teens. Uh, the second course, uh, which we just rolled out this year, is Finding Your Voice, which talks about career readiness. Uh, for our students. Uh, the third course, which we'll uh, get started in uh, 2021, is Take Charge, which talks about uh, college readiness and all the things that are involved in that. And then finally, our, our fourth course will be Inspiring Others, and that is uh, getting uh, our students ready to uh, be leaders uh, in, their, in their home, in their community, uh, in, in the world at large. So let's I'll give you this challenge as well. If you had to pick three words uh, to describe your program at North Gaston, what would those words be? Uh, the three words that I, I think uh, best apply are realize, actualize, actualize, actualize and impact. Uh, as far as realize goes, students can realize their full potential. Uh, they can learn to improve themselves first uh, as they've gone, if, if they've gone through the, uh, elementary and middle uh, projects into high school, but also if they just come into North Gaston uh, as a foundation for their leadership journey. Actual, actualize, which I'm having a hard time saying today, uh, but putting the habits into, into action uh, where students can take the lead. Uh, we have them develop projects that are meaningful to them uh, and see those projects come to fruition, uh, which can have an impact on their community. Uh, a quick example, uh, one of our students saw a need in our community for uh, helping those uh, uh, in need with food. And so she created, her project was a blessing box, which is now installed out front of our school, uh, which is stocked with uh, uh, sustainable food items that uh, folks in our community can come by and pick up to help them uh, make it through these difficult times. And then finally, impact. Uh, students will not only impact their own lives, but also the lives of those they come in contact with from their family, their friends uh, for the years to come. And I think those words really describe not only your program, but the programs at Costner and WC Friday, because first you're helping students realize their potential, realize that they can be a leader, and then uh, taking those qualities and putting them into action in a way that benefits the community and, and really helps the students as well. So uh, I think that applies across all three of those programs. So Mr. Connor, if there's one thing that you want parents and the community and students to know about North Gaston related to the Leadership Academy, what is it? Uh, Todd, I would say that this program is designed to impact the whole student, uh, not only academically, but also infuse them with the leadership qualities, which will serve them throughout their entire life. And for those of you who are watching today, we put both of these academy programs together on purpose because you can see the parallels in the two programs through the Public Service Academy in Cherville. Those students are taking on leadership roles.
and through the Leadership Academy at our three Dallas area schools. Those students are being leaders and being of service to their schools and to the community. So you can see parallels uh, with both of the academy programs that we are featuring today. So I want to thank all of you for sharing great information about these programs, because when you hear what is going on at uh, your schools, you realize that the, the choice options we have in Cherville and in Dallas, they are great options for students. So we have heard about those programs. Now I would like to ask uh, Ms. Serbeck to provide some general information to us about school choice in Gaston County Schools. Thank you, Mr. Hagens. Um, it's exciting to me that parents can go on our website and apply for all of our choice programs. Todd, what this allows families to do is to sit together and read about all the programs that we have to offer. They're frequently asked questions on the website and then they can choose what is best suited for their child as a family. Um, I would encourage everybody to apply for as many choice programs as they believe their child's interested in. They can make that choice later on in the process. Um, the deadline for doing this is February 28th. I do want to stress that day, as Mr. Higgins has already said, because that is a hard date. If you want to do something after that, you're not able to do that, Mr. Higgins. So please encourage everyone to do it before February 28th. Our lottery will be held on April the 1st. It is done virtually by a third party. Um, so there's no need to be there. You will be notified by email on April the 2nd. So as they do all the lotteries on the same day, it'll be the next day before notices go out. You'll see that through your email and your Scribbles account. And it will direct you what to do um, from there. All final um, places will be set by July 28th in order for schools to plan for school starting in August. And Terry, I like to say selecting school choice options is almost like selecting colleges. You have a program that you apply to or a college that you apply to, and that is your number one choice, but you always have some backups. And I think that with school choice, if you've got a, a school choice program that you really want, apply for that, but also have, uh, go ahead and apply for a couple of backup choices because you want your name in the hat, I guess you could say, so that if that first choice doesn't work out in the lottery, you've got some other choices that you can select um, through the lottery process. You may not get into that first choice, but that second or third choice may be open and that may be a, a great school choice opportunity. So I think it is important to, to make sure people understand apply to as many programs that you are interested in before the deadline on February 28th. Mr. Higgins, if I could add also, it enables children to go on wait list in those programs so that they have several choices. Um, once the first seat offer is done and they go on a wait list, they could possibly be offered a seat into another academy. So we do, the wait list goes all the way through for everyone that's put into that lottery. Okay, that's a good point to make. So now we're going to give those of you joining us for our information session an opportunity to submit questions. And you can do that through the Q&A feature in the webinar. And you will notice at the bottom of your screen, there is a Q&A icon that will allow you to submit a question. We do ask that you keep your questions general since we have a number of people participating in our webinar. If you have a question that is specific to your child or your family, uh, we, want, um, we want you to ask that so that we can talk with you offline. We certainly do not want to share any personal family information over uh, this webinar. Uh, if someone asks a question that we cannot answer right now, we will get your contact information so that we can follow up with you. And we do wanna let you know that you can submit questions. If you think of a question uh, this afternoon or at some other part time that you didn't get to ask today, you can submit that question to us by email. The email address is schoolchoice 
at gaston.k12.nc.us and we uh, check those emails and we will get an answer back to you uh, about your child or, or a specific uh, situation with your family. Again, that email address is schoolchoice at gaston.k12.nc.us. I am going to ask now, we're gonna to look to see what questions have been submitted. And I'm gonna ask for Ms. Serbeck's help and as well as our school representatives, if you will help me answer some of those questions as I try to facilitate what has uh, been submitted to us. And um, Ms. Serbeck, you mentioned earlier about the waiting list. All of the programs, do they all have a waiting list? Yes, sir. So the, the lottery is done with giving everyone that's in that lottery a spot. They take the top spots that are available to each school and offer those seats. And then the remaining remainder students will go on the wait list. So each choice program offers that wait list. Okay. Okay. Um, another question we might have, let's see. Um, how, how are students, uh, is it decided that students get into a program? And I think the answer to that is the lottery. Do you want to talk a little bit about the lottery process? Sure. So each program has different criteria. So if you apply for a program that may have some academic criteria, we will reach out to you to make sure that we have all that information. Um, all programs require that your child be in good standing, which means good grades, good attendance, and good behavior. Um, that also keeps them in the academy, but that is what puts you in the lottery once you apply. Um, the lottery, like I said, was performed by a third party, so um, it is done and sent to us. So we see it when parents see it. That is the first time. And everyone receives an email saying, you, congratulations, you've got a seat offer or you're number one on the wait list or number 20 on the wait list. And you can watch your dashboard to watch that change. Okay. And it looks like we have a couple of questions uh, related to WC Friday. And Ms. Uh, Davis, we'll see if you can help me answer some of these questions. Um, there was you mentioned about opportunities for stu students in the program, regardless of their backgrounds and related to the uh, social and emotional support that's provided up to students. Can you talk a little bit about how your program not only supports students yes. academically, but you have supports to meet social and emotional needs of students? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so our students, every every student is in, um, involved in a lead class, um, and that's typically a very small class. We like to keep it um, like around 10 or 12, um, and that's with a teacher that they don't necessarily have during the day. And what we found is a lot of students are really able to connect with that teacher that they don't have an academic class with or that staff member that they don't necessarily have work to do for and things like that. They're able to connect with them on a different level. Um, and of course, those teachers are trained in the Leader in Me program and how to really help the students find their, their, their skills and their leadership styles and um, build those to help build the confidence um, and things like that. We've also found that the students build really strong relationships with their classmates in those classes because they are able to share more. And of course, they're never pushed to share anything they're not comfortable with, um, but a lot of them are willing to open up a little more to those teachers and those students. And one additional question about WC Friday, and I think that um, certainly this could apply to all three of the Leadership Academy programs, talking about diversity and inclusion uh, in the curriculum and in the staff development. I would think, and you all correct me if I'm wrong, that diversity and including students of all backgrounds in your program is important. Mr. Connor, would you like to elaborate on that? That's one of the tenets of the of the Cuppy Foundation is uh, finding your uh, your leadership within you, and then uh, expanding that out into uh, your school and in, into your community. And so we are extremely inclusive in everything we do. We also uh, have 
uh, set up leadership uh, uh, sessions where our students are not with their teachers mainly. Uh, and we do those types of uh, activities and things with, with them as well. So, And Ms. Willis, I, I think, and um, Ms. Davis, you, you probably will agree with that. In the activities and the lessons and the programs, you want to reach a, um, a variety of topics and ideas so that, that students really, and I think one of you mentioned that, that students really get to discover the leader in inside because all the students are different you know that we we aren't um we aren't made uh, from a cookie cutter pattern i guess you could say and so being inclusive and providing diversity is important at, at even at the elementary level absolutely we have the homeroom teachers during lead time have their class do different teams so you have an environment team, you have an events team, you have a community team within your classroom. And we let the environment team tell us where we're gonna put posters and where we're gonna hang up artwork and all that kind of stuff. They make the environment. So it really gives them a sense of ownership in that, if their classroom. Well, I, I want to thank all of you again for being with us, and I thank you all for participating and for submitting your questions. And again, as I said earlier, if you have a question that we did not answer today, or if you have a question that comes up, comes to mind uh, later, please send us an email, schoolchoice at gaston.k12.nc.us, and we will try to get your questions answered for you. And we do want to remind everyone that you can get more information about School Choice in all 21 of our programs on the Gaston County Schools website. So we encourage you to visit our School Choice page online for more information. I want to thank all of you for joining us for our School Choice information session today. This webinar coincides with this week being National School Choice Week. We realize that students and parents have options and we sincerely appreciate you taking time to explore the many options and choices that we have available in Gaston County Schools. We certainly believe that choosing Gaston County Schools is the best choice because of the caring teachers, the effective academic programs, and the many outstanding resources that we have available for students. So we look forward to having your family as part of our 21 school choice programs in 2021. A reminder, go to our website to learn more about school choice. And again, we thank you for being with us for this school choice information session, and we hope you have a great afternoon.